we're going to learn about what forces are in play when an arrow like this soars through the air. Here's a hint. Don't just look at the arrow, check out the bow. It's a key part of this action. The moment the archer pulls back the string and releases, the force from the string sends the arrow soaring. Let's look at this in slow motion. Not only is there a forward motion, check out the backward motion. As the string is pulled back, the string exerts force on the arrow. What's harder to see is that at the same time, the arrow exerts force right back on the string. When the arrow is released, the bow moves less than the arrow in the opposite direction, but does accelerate a little. And the archer is definitely feeling the force. How much? Let's figure it out. You are now seeing Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Another way to say it, any exerted force is countered by a force of the same magnitude and in the opposite direction. So, if object A exerts a force on object B, object B will exert a force on object A that is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. We know from Newton's second law that force is equal to mass times acceleration. We can now see that when we substitute the second law equation into the third law, we can analyze our forces acting in more detail. This may be hard to believe because it doesn't appear equal at all in this case. The bow seemed to stand still while the arrow flew into the air, but why? It's all about the mass of the bow versus the mass of the arrow. Let's figure out how much the bow will accelerate back as the arrow is launched forward into the air. The arrow has a mass of 0.10 kilograms with an average rate of acceleration of 1,280 meters per second squared. The mass of the bow is 4 kilograms. The bow exerts a force on the arrow as it is fired in the positive x direction. According to Newton's third law, the bow will also experience a force from the arrow of equal magnitude in the negative x direction. We see that by substituting in Newton's second law, the mass of the arrow times the acceleration of the arrow equals the mass of the bow times the acceleration of the bow in the opposite direction. We can rearrange this equation to solve for the acceleration of the bow. The acceleration of the bow equals negative the mass of the arrow times the acceleration of the arrow divided by the mass of the bow. We can now plug in our values to find the acceleration. Negative 0.10 kilograms times 1,280 meters per second squared divided by 4 kilograms equals negative 32.0 meters per second squared, or 32.0 meters per second squared in the negative direction. Thus, the bow accelerates backwards at 32.0 meters per second squared. If the force of one thing acting on another is always equal in magnitude yet opposite in direction, then how does anything ever accelerate? Even though the two forces are equal in magnitude, one can accelerate more than the other because one can have a smaller mass, like the arrow when compared to the bow. The much smaller arrow accelerated at 1,280 meters per second squared, while the much larger bow accelerated at a smaller amount, 32.0 meters per second squared. Okay, let's head for the skies and look at another example. A skydiver is in a free fall toward Earth. The Earth is pulling the skydiver with the same force as the skydiver is pulling on the Earth, but in the opposite direction. Even though the forces are the same, the skydiver is accelerating to Earth exponentially faster than the Earth is accelerating toward the skydiver. Because Earth is so much more massive, it takes a lot more force to move the Earth compared to the skydiver. So the acceleration isn't the same and neither is the mass. So each side of the equation is equal but the variables on each are bigger or smaller depending on the mass and acceleration of the objects. As far as physics goes and following Newton's third law, the Earth does accelerate toward the skydiver, ever so slightly. We can sum up this idea into what's called an action-reaction pair. Action-reaction pairs show the relationship between an object that is doing the action and another object reacting to that action. As a skydiver jumps from a plane, the Earth pulls on the skydiver and the skydiver pulls back on the Earth. What are some other action-reaction pairs? When you walk down the sidewalk, you push on the ground, the ground pushes on you. A swimmer pushes on the water, the water pushes back on the swimmer. A hammer pushes on a nail, 
the nail pushes back on the hammer. At a rocket launch, the rocket's weight, yes, weight is force, is pushing on the ground. And the ground is pushing back on the rocket, an action-reaction pair. And on liftoff, inside the rocket engine, all the combustion gases are igniting, pushing on the rocket. And the rocket is pushing back on the gases with a force equal in size, but in the opposite direction, another action-reaction pair. It is this rocket combustion gas action-reaction pair that will cause liftoff, as well as the movement of the rocket into space. So let's go back to the bow and arrow. What are the action-reaction pairs at work here? There's the force of your fingers pulling back the string and the string and bow reacting by pulling back against your fingers. When your fingers release the string and the arrow, the string exerts a force on the arrow pushing the arrow forward. The reaction is the arrow pushing on the string. And while we're looking at that speeding arrow, remember from another lesson, as soon as the arrow leaves the string, there is no more horizontal acceleration because there is no more horizontal force. The bow has done its job. However, gravity is a force constantly pulling the arrow down vertically. Gravity from the earth pulls on the arrow, the arrow pulls back on the earth. And now you know forces work in pairs. And you've seen some of the ways forces work together to make things move. That's it for this segment of Physics in Motion. We'll see you next time. For more practice problems, lab activities, and note-taking guides, check out the Physics in Motion Toolkit.